now with our new series, Live on GMA, as millions across the country face a flash flooding threat. We're showing you what to do if you're caught in one. Matt Gutman is in Maryland with a live demonstration. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Robin. You know, so often we report about people being hurt or drowning in flash floods or major storms. And our experts tell us that many of these incidents are survivable. And so over the next few minutes, I'm going to teach folks some very basic tips about how to get out of a situation like this alive. Now, one of the major things you need to know is you can see those pumps right now in front of us dumping 200,000 gallons of water a minute into this dry riverbed and we are trying to simulate a real flash flood and the reason it's so important to do this live is to show people at home that this can be done in real time now we have taken major safety precautions here at adventure sports center international we have a team of rescuers standing by from rescue three international uh, you may be able to tell that uh, we chained the front of a car to this concrete and uh, I'm wearing a life preserver as well underneath this shirt. Now, you can tell at this point we've got three pumps going that the water is going pretty swiftly. Six inches of water can knock a person off their feet. A foot of water will sweep your car away. I'm going to get in it right now before it gets too late. You don't want to do this at home. A lot of people get into the situation. They don't have to and we're going to show you the worst that can happen in this video that you're about to see and also some basic safety tips and you're going to be able to see exactly what is happening in this car the water rolling up in this live box in the corner of your screen it's scenes like these that make it so important to show you how to evade and escape your worst water nightmare I'm banging on the roof, just yelling, screaming, please get my kids out of the back of this truck. Everybody here made it out alive. Flash floods tossing cars like bath toys, leaving drivers stranded and rescue teams scrambling. In Texas this summer, firefighters punching their way through this car window to rescue a woman trapped inside. And these New Jersey newlyweds stuck in rising waters just moments after their ceremony. The car was flooding and we couldn't get out. Within four or five minutes, it went from a puddle to a raging river. An average of 94 people in the U.S. die every year in floodwaters. Nearly half of those deaths occur in vehicles likely trying to cross submerged roads. That's not a river down there. That was once part of a highway. It can even happen in stagnant water. Experts say a flooded road may look passable on the surface, but because of unseen dips, it could be deeper than expected. When water's covering the road, you really can't tell the depth of the water until it's too late. Just two weeks ago, a man died after attempting to drive through this flooded Texas Parkway. Water there, a deceiving eight feet deep. Some streets may look like they're passable, and I've seen firsthand that they're not. It takes a mere six inches of swift moving water to knock a person off their feet. In cars, that water can be sucked into the tailpipe, causing the engine to stall out. And at just 12 inches, that swift water will carry away most vehicles. I don't think people realize the power of the water. No vehicle was floodproof. Once the water gets halfway up the tires of a car, an SUV, or a fire truck, it's prone to float and be swept away. One of the most important things to remember? If you're approaching a flooded roadway, remember, it's not worth it. Turn around, don't drown. You heard that turn around, don't drown. Too often people realize that they're getting inside a, uh, a submerged road. They don't see how deep the water is. All right, so the key here is getting out quickly. One thing you don't want to do, do not call 911. Do not get on your phone. What you do want to do is do that later. First thing, take your seatbelt off. Next thing, roll down the window. Now, a car battery should live for about, I don't know, a minute or two during that situation. If you do need to break it and your window's not going down, you can even use a headrest, smash it, always hit the corner of your window. Okay, next thing, seatbelt. You want to roll down the window as quickly as you can. Now you want to use anything you can to climb up to get on top of this roof. You can use the steering wheel, the visor, even the seatbelt. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to put my feet on the seat. I'm going to climb out onto this roof. All right. Now you're going to want to ride this roof. If you do still have your phone on you, now is the time to call 911. It's a lot easier for rescuers to see you up top this beat up blue car than it is to see you in the water. Okay. This car is going to be 
careening down this river. It's probably going to smash up at some point against a tree or an obstacle. And there may be a point at which you feel you need to get off. You don't want to be in it or on top of it when it smashes against something. So what we're going to do is what's called defensive swimming. At some point, I'm going to jump in the water and try to swim to a calmer looking part of the water or an eddy. And that's where I'm going to try to get on shore and get out of this water. So defensive swimming, you like a bug on their back. You're going to keep your feet up in the air and you're going to use your legs as bumpers, basically fending off any obstacles in your way. And when you do see that shallow spot, that part where you think you want to get out of the water, that's when you swim like hell. Now, I may lose you. You may not be able to hear me, but I'll talk to you on the other side. Here we go. Also, try to belly flop in. Okay, be careful, Matt. Be careful. Now, Matt's in the water, as you see now, and we have his rescue crew standing by. Mike Berna is instructor trainer with Rescue 3 International, watching Matt closely. And Mike, we can see that Matt is swimming using those techniques you gave him. Walk us through what he's doing. Yeah, so if your car becomes submerged or you're swept off it, your life's going to be in peril. And right now, Matt's just doing everything he can to get out. So he's trying to find the calmest water possible and swim into that. It doesn't matter how you get out. You need to get the higher ground or a safer area immediately, even if that means you just climb on and hold on to a tree until help comes. Oh, goodness. So you find that area, which Matt was yes. able to do, and then, like uh, he said, you just so swim. <laughs> how? So, Matt, I know that you, even with the preparation, what was it like being in the water, having no control there for a while? You saw my head got dunked underneath. Right. It's always startling when that happens. Also, the water is always colder than you think it's going to be. And so that can be startling. But other than that, you know, once I found that sort of shallower, calmer spot, I just started to swim as fast as I could, Robin. What do you want viewers to know most, Matt? Listen, there are a couple simple tips. Don't get into this kind of situation. Turn around, don't drown. Don't try to drive your car through one of these flash floods. If you're in one, remember, seat belt, window out. Three basic tips, seat belt, window out. Robin. Glad that you're okay, Matt. I'm glad you had that crew there standing by just in case. Yeah. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.